For more information on today's program, contact Erica Taylor Montgomery at threegirlsmedia.com. Now, back to Punch, media and marketing made easy on the Bay Area's business leader, AM 1220 KDOW. Welcome back to Punch, Media and Marketing Made Easy on 1220 AM KDOW, the Wall Street Business Network. I'm your host, Erica Taylor Montgomery, and you can find more information about today's topics on the Punch Marketing blog, where our guests have actually provided some additional tips about today's topics. And right now we're talking about creating a powerful brand. And you can check out our blog at punchmarketing.biz. That's punchmarketing.biz. Now, our guest is Christine Clifford of Christine Clifford Enterprises, and you can find her online at christineclifford.com. So, Christine, uh, I'm curious, when creating a brand, do you really think it's the companies that drive that, or is it individuals that create a brand? You know, that's a really good question, Erica, and um, I, I, I would answer that based on the size of your company. Certainly, if you are an entrepreneur with five employees or less, you really are your company's brand. Um, with larger companies, when I, I worked for 20 years for a, a New York-based marketing company called the Spar Group, but within a large company, you can actually create your own brand to represent that company's products or services. So using that as an example, uh, our company provided retail services to the packaged goods industry, but I became the go-to person or the expert in our field in certain categories such as toys and home electronics and uh, health and beauty aids. So I became the go-to person kind of creating my own brand within a company. But literally, regardless of the size of your company, Everything we do and say relative to our company is a direct reflection on our brand and is, is building brand awareness. So, um, you know, some companies like, uh, for example, uh, I, I've often asked myself the question, if something happened to me personally, could the Cancer Club or Divorcing Divas, for example, go on under somebody else's tutelage? Well, absolutely. You know, I've created a company that can, that has surpassed me as the brand, but I am the face of the company, and so, you know, I think they go hand in hand. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And I think, uh, you know, really, especially if you have a small company that say, uh, you know, even 20 or fewer employees, that every single employee is a reflection of that brand. And it's so important that every single individual understands exactly what that brand stands for, what the brand story is, and really how to position that brand to the public, because it really is all about brand awareness and name recognition when you're talking about growing your business. So critically important uh, to know that. Now, um, Christine, one of the things that you talk about in your upcoming book that's called Let's Close a Deal, and it's going to be released in April. Congratulations on that, by the way. Thank you. I'm very excited about it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm also a best-selling author, so I know how hard it is to take a book from start to finish, and kudos for having eight books already. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, uh, Well, one of the things that you discuss in Let's Close a Deal are four questions that you think every company needs to ask before they can even get started with creating a brand. So I'm really curious about those four questions and what they are. Well, the first question is, can I offer something or have I done something unique that no one has ever done before? That to me would be you know, the lead question. When I look back on starting the Cancer Club and divorcing divas, and let's just focus on the Cancer Club for a second, you know, there are literally millions of people with cancer. And in the year I was diagnosed, you know, 180,000 people were diagnosed or something. So I wasn't unique, but what I did was looked for something within that field of oncology that no one had done before, and my niche became cartoons. So my, the Cancer Club is a cartoon-based company. Uh, five of the books that I've written are cartoon-based books on using humor to get through the cancer experience. The second question you need to ask yourself is, is there an area in my industry or field 
that is untapped or unfulfilled. So once again, there were thousands and thousands of products out there for cancer patients, but none of them were humor-based. So I, I found an area, you know, that, that no one had, had touched on. The, the third question is, do I have much competition? And again, back when I started those companies, I had virtually no competition. No one else was out there marketing, you know, humorous products for cancer patients. And actually, I was the first company to start offering all-day educational seminars for people going through divorce. Obviously, people have followed in my footsteps and, you know, have created other companies that are similar to mine, but I got a head start. And the last question you need to ask yourself is, can I put a new twist on my subject matter, your product, your service, your cause, that will appeal to a broad range of people? If what you have done is unique and it's untapped and you don't have any competition but no one else is going to want it, you know, you haven't created a viable product or company. So those are the four questions, Erica. You know, I think those are fabulous questions. And honestly, without even knowing it, I addressed every single one of those issues as I was starting my company, Three Girls Media, uh, seven and a half years ago. And I really positioned ourselves as a public relations and social media marketing agency that worked with small businesses. And we were the first PR agency in the nation to literally guarantee editorial media results for our clients. And that was really, really a, a new thing that nobody had done before. It was a niche market, and we've become tremendously successful because of that. And, of course, we've expanded our offerings and uh, and now do uh, more uh, services since we began. But, uh, really, that was the foundation of our business and what helped us get a really great head start. That's great. Uh, so one of the other things that you talk about in uh, Let's Close the Deal, which again is coming out in April, you also write about something called niche notoriety. What's that all about? Well, um, you know, it's interesting. Uh, to me, I, I think what happens to too many people is they try to be a jack of all trades and they and they continue to add products and services to their companies that uh, deviate from their original path. Creating niche notoriety to me is all about becoming the expert in your field, becoming the go-to person in your field. I'm going to real quickly tell a, a quick story about a, my brother who lives in Montana, and he's a handyman. And for years, Greg's business was booming. He was building multi-million dollar houses and ski resorts, and then the economy crashed, and so did Greg's business. Well, I went out to visit him, and we got in his truck, and we were driving around the Whitefish area of Montana, and he was lovingly pointing out to me all these houses that he'd worked on, but what he was pointing to was, I did that stair rail, or I did the hardwood floors in that house, or I did the shutters on that house, or I built that deck. And I said, you know, Greg, despite all these talents you have as a handyman, what you really specialize in. What you could create a niche in is becoming a master of fine woodwork. So we literally went back to his place, created these business cards that look like they're made out of beautiful wood, drove up a flyer, and I told him to go around and pass them out all over town, you know, saying, you know, specializes in fine woodwork. And what happened? Greg's phone started ringing off the hook. And what happens when you create niche notoriety for yourself, you really become the go-to specialist. Now, the door opens, you get in, you put down the hardwood floors, but while you're there, they're going to ask you, you know, gee, Christine, you know, my uh, there's a pipe broken in my basement and a door has come off the hinge and I've got, you know, my furnace isn't working. Can you fix those things? Well, of course he can fix those things. He's a handyman, so he gets spin-off business or additional business, but it was his niche notoriety that got him in the door. And that's what I, I talk about. Uh, an entire chapter is devoted to that in uh, Let's Close a Deal. 
You know, I think that is a fantastic story and a great lesson that so many companies can learn from. So, Christine, uh, where is your book going to be available? Will people be able to find it on, like, Amazon, for example? Yeah, it's actually already posted on Amazon, so they're taking pre-orders, um, but it'll be in all the bookstores, you know, that are left. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I know. <laughs> now with and, you know, and all the, and all the bookstores, but... Uh, yeah, definitely barnesandnoble.com or amazon.com. Terrific. Our guest has been Christine Clifford of Christine Clifford Enterprises. You can find her online at christineclifford.com. And you can also find more information uh, about creating a powerful bland, brand on our Punch Media blog. Uh, you can find that at punchmarketing.biz. You're listening to Punch Media and Marketing Made Easy on 1220 AM KDOW. I'm your host, Erica Taylor Montgomery, and we'll be right back after the break.